Uh, David Miliband, Chief Executive of the International Rescue <laughs> Committee, former Foreign Secretary, welcome, or should I call you Madam? Well, thank you very much. I've, I've had many introductions in my time, but I've honestly never been introduced as Madam Secretary before, so I'll <laughs> take that with... Uh, um, love you too, uh, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> but David, when it comes to introductions, you have played, I think you realise, a very, very important part in the life of myself and Ian Dale because you were Cupid. You introduced Ian Dale and me. Can you remember when that happened? I have got a lot to answer for. My goodness, I, I didn't realise that was on the charge sheet as well. What, 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 what occasion was that? Is it Was it some... Uh, I honestly can't remember. He, how can you not remember something as important as that? You invited me you in the cabinet meetings that was that was a privilege that was always good was, i don't think he was there i don't think he was well, on did, the table. did you used to pass notes to each other of a naughty variety definitely he Definitely. was. I can say that David Miliband was better behaved than Douglas Alexander, who I also sat next to, and we did used to slightly mess about. And I don't know if David can remember the occasion on which I turned round and the Downing Street cat had done a poo under the <laughs> under the table. <laughs> you see, this is what you get on the For the Many podcast. If you've never listened to it, that is a typical example of a Jackie Smith anecdote. <laughs> David, anyway, how did I introduce the two of you? Just you introduced us when you as Foreign Secretary invited me over to the Foreign Office to do a talk to your officials and you were being followed around by Ian Dale because he was writing about you for GQ magazine and he intru you introduced me to him at that point and the rest is history. And look what I'm responsible for. You're not, I've led you to fame and fortune. <laughs> right. Now, uh, let's stop this. Let's, let's get down to the serious business. Now, David, you've got three people that you would like to nominate as your people of 2020, I believe. Well, you told me I had to do this when I got an email last night, so I follow your <laughs> command. I, mean, it, what they, what, I didn't realise it was people of 2020. What they said was people who've influenced you in 2020. So that's it's, fine. Um, no, that's good. Is that, is that all right? So yeah. yeah. For, for reasons that Jackie will very much um, appreciate, um, my wife Louise has to be number one. I mean, yes. it would be, I, I'd get into trouble if I, I wouldn't be telling the truth. She had, I want to say this though, because I mean, there's been a, a crazy year, obviously, for all sorts of reasons. But um, the way Louise has pivoted everything to keep our family going while keeping her music going, you know, kids who are doing learning remotely. I mean, honestly, I always thought she was an amazing person, but um, it really, really taught me so much and has just been not just a, an incredible rock, but has just really, you know, lent into this this crazy year um so that's number one uh, second is i don't know if you've heard of this guy i'd love people to get a chance to, to 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 look into him a bit there's a man called brian stevenson who's a completely inspirational uh, american he runs something called the equal justice initiative which is based in montgomery uh, alabama he was the start he wrote a book called just mercy which um, then um, which uh, michael d johnson was played him in the film you may have seen the film and he's a warrior for equality. And, he, in, you know, this has been an incredible year for debates about uh, racial justice, etc. And I, I really think he, he, he's been my teacher. I mean, he's, I, I, I first of all, met him three or four years ago. So I think he's been, I, I would nominate, I would not nominate him. And then, look, just one of the things that one's looking at, when, when one's worried about where governments are going, you think, can, can people outside government change things? And... Um, do you remember when, uh, one of the things I'll never forget of this year, Marcus Rashford's done many things, but do you remember when he, he started saying, right, okay, the government's not providing the meals, I'm challenging businesses, organisations to provide the meals, and suddenly on your phone you got um, pins coming up of all the places in the country that were starting to provide the meals for the, for the kids, and suddenly the whole of Britain was sort of filled up with those red dots that were showing what he was doing. So I, I think he... He definitely qualifies. That's the second person in a row who has chosen Mark, Marcus. Really? Marshall, David. Yeah. Who was yeah. the other person? Who was my predecessor in this? Rory Bremner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> well, I, th I think one of the interesting things here, and I suspect we're going to hear a lot more about this over the rest of the show, is the people that launch individual campaigns, some of whom are very famous, like Marcus mm. Rashford, others who are not. Um, two of my people of the, of the year are Rhiannon and, and Richard Stanton, who l lost their baby at Shrewsbury and Telford Hospital Trust back in 20, 2009, I think mm. it was. And they have spent the last 11 years campaigning 
uh, for justice for people who've lost babies in similar circumstances. And, yeah. and they, they weren't famous. Because of what happened to them, they launched this campaign. You had I interviewed Alicia Cairns, a Conservative MP, um, whose constituents I now can't remember, about a week ago. Um, she launched this campaign to make sure that women can have partners um, mm. at, at their births, which, I mean, many people think, oh, why is that so important? Well, it is important it for is. many people. Yeah. And she was, she was only elected a, a year ago, ordinary backbench MP. She's made a difference, and that's all anybody can do, isn't it? Why is it now possible, David, do you think, for people outside government to have that influence in the way in which you suggest? Is it something about social media campaigns? Has it always well, been like way, that? Look, but, but civil rights campaigns, campaigns for justice have often been outside government. But what what's changed, I think, is that the resources to connect people have never been greater. Now, of course, the resources to divide people have never been more powerful. But the resources to connect people, I think, have never been uh, greater. And those and, and, you know, the rest of this decade, maybe the rest of the century is a, is a contest whether the the resources for division win out or the resources mm. for unity win out. I mean, I, I always say to people, look, the world's more connected than ever before, but people sometimes feel more divided than ever before. And it's a contest. Are, are strangers going to become enemies or are strangers going to become potential allies? That's that's what I think is going on. And the, mm. the debate about social media or what I sometimes call anti-social media is, is at the absolute heart of this. And one of the things, of course, that I've been doing this year with my Joe Cox Foundation hat on is we've been trying to find the ways in which the COVID pandemic experience has connected people as opposed to separated people mm. and celebrate that. And let's hope that's something that we can get out of what's been agreed. Well, we've, we've learned all sorts of different ways of connecting with each other over this pandemic. I mean, the fact that in, in this programme, which you will be able to see on the LBC website, Envision, we've got all of our guests via Zoom or FaceTime video or whatever with us in the studio. Looking we gorgeous. Were, we were, looking terribly gorgeous. <laughs> if we were doing this a, a year or two ago, it would have all just been audio, but visualisation has become the thing, whether it's a business meeting meeting or, or whether on a radio station. Uh, David, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. That's David Miliband, Chief Executive Love of the Louise. International <laughs> Rescue Committee, getting a few brownie points from his wife there for, for that contribution. She's lovely. <laughs>